Rick Heller, an infectious disease expert. Now, Rick, this second wave that they're talking about, officials are saying it could be larger than the first wave. Why is that? Well, the first wave really came at the end of what is flu season and what generally is uh, seasonal epidemics. So what we got is really the tail end uh, this time. So we're going to see a full-blown epidemic, just like we have in flu, where it'll peak in February or March. Well, is there anything that we can do right now to stop that second wave from happening? Well, uh, you know, we, we hear about uh, potential miracles, which I would call them, in, uh, in uh, therapies and most of all in vaccines. Uh, the things that we can do to mitigate uh, or, or let me back up for a second. In SARS-CoV-1, they call it, in 2003, it was extincted by July. And it was uh, no small effort to do so over about five or six countries uh, the world over. But it was much smaller, and that particular coronavirus was not as infectious. The things that we can do are uh, to lower our susceptibility. That would be to be healthier to uh, hydrate more, particularly in the winter. Because the reason that it peaks in the winter is, believe it or not, because of dry air. And what happens is the dry air gets exchanged in commercial buildings many times an hour by law, and that's for our health. But it turns out that that dryness allows a sick person to transmit much more easily to many more people over a much larger distance in a room indoor. Yeah, as you mentioned, the flu, the flu itself is seasonal. Could the number of COVID-19 cases actually go down as the temperature begins to rise? Yeah, well, I think, I, I believe strongly uh, that that is going to be the case. Now, uh, going down is, uh, is one thing, being extinct is another, and I don't think we're going to be able to, to get there, but I want to be optimistic. I mean, I guess there's a chance. Yes, the uh, case count will go down. We've certainly done, from a behavioral point of view, uh, maybe not all we can do, but almost all we can do. And we've done an, such an excellent job at it. I must say that flu dropped like a rock over the past three weeks. It's about 1% of what it was two or three weeks ago. And this flu has been catching a lot of, uh, has caused a lot of death about a quarter of a million hospitalized, and that's just in the U.S. alone. There have been other coronaviruses in the past. What makes this one so powerful? Well, um, we've obviously heard more about it because it certainly has claimed more people. There is currently a coronavirus in the Middle East called the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, not to be confused with MRSA, a bacterial infection. And MERS is uh, zoonotic, which means it comes from animals, and it is very likely camel-borne. And so the Middle East has this you know, continuing chronic problem, but uh, nothing of the size of this, and uh, uh, nothing like SARS. And for whatever reason, they haven't been able to put it down where they did with SARS-CoV-1. Uh, this is just far more infectious. In fact, this is as infectious as uh, norovirus. And that's the, the thing the English call, uh, funny enough, the winter vomiting disease. And we see it in some fast food restaurants and comes through uh, uh, various different forms. But it's, uh, it's not deadly at all, but it's highly infectious. All right, a lot of great information there for us tonight. Rick Keller, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I appreciate it.